Hare so, Krishna. We are able to hear you, please. Yes. Uh, I wrote a tribute for my brother, which I hope somebody could read, because I cannot bring it up on my computer while I'm on the computer. But if that is not the case, then I can simply speak more um, transparently. That uh, how would you like to do? Would you like to read the tribute, or do you have it? Uh, 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 we don't have it as of now, but Praji, uh, once you send it, we will host it on our website. And for now, if you can share your own words as well, Praji, we would love to hear from you. Oh, well, one one devotee does have it. They read it, but um. Okay, so then, um, then I will speak extemporaneously. You sure? Because I'm pretty sure it's there. Abhishek, Abhishek okay. has it. Okay, Abhishek. Uh, yes, uh, we'll get it from Abhishek Prabhuji as well. You want us to read that offering? Okay. Well, I don't want to change so, anything. What would you like me to do then? Prabhuji, if you can, uh, if you can speak okay. few words for now. And we'll we'll yeah, circulate that offering in all the for the global community and the local community as well. But we would really want to hear from you some words. But if for just for a few minutes at least you can speak. Yes, well because my brother uh, he I had it very nicely put out in the uh, in the in the paper that I prepared, but uh, I can say that my brother from birth was a very unusual individual in that he was born actually saffron colored because he he had what appeared to be like jaundice but actually i think it was a premonition of his later life ending just recently he uh just like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he was born in Puri, took, took, made, appeared in Puri, uh, had around his neck the umbilical cord exactly like the uh, bindi, the sacred thread of the Brahmin. So my brother came out predisposed to austerity and predisposed to uh, renunciation by coming out, why was he saffron colored? Was well, he technically had jaundice from a RH factor, but I'm looking at uh, it more transcendentally that his he came out as a presupposition of who he was to become in later life, because his whole life was that based on austerity. Uh, everything he did was based on austerity. In fact, he didn't begin to speak until he was three years old. But when he did begin to speak, everyone was wondering, what would he say? But he said, with great seriousness on his face, no one knew that he could understand everything that was being said. And, uh, and he just spoke all of a sudden for the first time saying, without the usual chit chat of babies, he said, do ducks understand chick, uh, do ducks understand sheep? Now, how, why would he be considering how the different animals and species can communicate with each other unless he had a very profound understanding of life even at the age of three years old? So this went onward and he was always in the austere position. He was always very quiet. He never moved unless he had to move. And uh, he didn't really play the way children play. He was quiet and sober at all times. And this continued on as he grew up, when he was a student, when he was uh, involved in uh, University of California, Berkeley. Um, he was always very, very quiet. This and meeting is being recorded. I'm sorry? Someone said? 
Yeah, sorry, but that was just a recording voice. Please, please. Oh, oh, I see. So, continuing on, he, continuing on, he became more and more interested in the spiritual life. And we dabbled briefly with Zen Buddhism and with um, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, but it did not give any degree of satisfaction. But there came a time when uh, we had rented a storefront on 518 Frederick Street, which we were going to use for artistic purposes for ourselves. And just before we moved in, we found out to our great astonishment and not particularly satisfied idea that somebody had rented it from us, underneath us, and had taken the place that we were planning to use. It had been promised to us from a group of intellectuals in, that had been meeting there. And we found out, well, there was a holy man, a Swami, who somehow or other got the place from us, took our place that we had started to pay the rent and everything, but the landlord had given it to him instead. Little did I know that a year and a half later, we would be sleeping in the basement of that building as the 518 Frederick Street, Sri Sri Radhakrishna Temple in San Francisco, uh, and that the Swami who had taken the place would later be initiating us in that very space, in that very room, as his own disciples, after we had thought that that place was ours for some insignificant material use. So that's what happened. So on the, on the um, 19th of September, 1968, my brother, Matthew, and I mentioned his name as being Matthew because he is named after uh, Mathathias in Latin. Uh, Matthew comes from Mathathias, but Mathathias comes from the uh, uh, Aramaic Matasyoho. And Matasyoho was a hero. And my parents named him Matasyoho specifically that he would do heroic deeds in his life. So Matasyohu was one of the last of the Sikaris who had been struggling to take, keep the Romans out of the Temple of Solomon, the second Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. And, and he later died in a place called Masada. This is the, the original uh, Matasyohu in a place called Masada fighting the Romans to the end to keep them from desecrating the holy place in Jerusalem. And they all perished, like the Alamo. They all perished and perished in Masada, Matasyo. So my brother, Bhakti Madhurya Govinda Goswami Makanal, was named after Matasyohu. And then when he was sitting in front of Srila Prabhupada with the six other devotees that had were taking initiation on that day. And I might add that I'm two years older than my dear brother, but somehow or other, he was so auspicious that he took initiation the year, the day before I did. And um, that to me was sort of astonishing because here was my little brother, two years younger than me, that I'd known since he was a tiny baby. There he was, my elder godbrother, all of a sudden. And because, you know, he took initiation the day before me, I have to always offer my pranam to my brother Makanal of Akta Madhura Govinda Goswami, because uh, that's the etiquette. And it, I took great pleasure in giving him that honor. And I have actually honored younger brothers my whole life because of the auspiciousness of my brother, Akta Madhura Govinda Goswami. 
So he's sitting in front of Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada has just finished, you know, Prabhupada would chant personally 16 rounds, not 16 rounds, one round of 108 beads on, on the initiation beads. And he, Prabhupada was sitting there, and they had the beads. My brother at that time was very eager. He was always very uh, quiet, very introspective, but he always had that marvelous expression, that marvelous smile on his face, even when he was at that time 22 years old. <coughs> and as he sat there, he sat up very eagerly, like a chip, like a little chipmunk, like a little, you know, in the park, a little rodent with a fluffy tail. He was up like he was trying to take some walnuts or something from Prabhupada. He was eager, and Prabhupada had the beads, and he dangled them in front of uh, my brother, and said, "Your," <clears throat> he said like this, "Your initiated name is Makhanlal." And my brother looks at him with great eagerness and surprise. And he said, do you know what is Makanal? My brother shook his head, no. Makanal is butter thief. Your name is Makanal, butter, butter thief. That's Prabhupada's accent. At that time, Prabhupada had a much stronger accent than he did some years later. But, uh, it was amazing. So my brother, Makanlal, butter thief. So, he, and that's the pastime, of course, when Krishna uh, is stealing the butter and giving to monkeys. And so my brother made a specialty to always take the holy name and give it to as many people as he could. Like butter thief doesn't mean he takes the, Makanlal doesn't take the butter and keep the butter. Makanal takes the butter from Mother Yasoda and distributes it as prasad to all the monkeys and all the living beings. So that is what he was like. He was always distributing the holy name of Krishna. And this was Prabhupada's desire and Prabhupada's intent that he should do so. So he continued on and became a temple president in St. Louis. Missouri, he became temple president also in um, Seattle, Washington. And where he was, he always was very much revered because he looked at people with great compassion. In my written commemoration, that is, um, that I don't have the copy in front of me or I'd be reading it, I suppose. Uh, he became early on in 1969, he was initiated in 68. In 69, he became in San Francisco still obsessed with the notion of seeing Lord Nityananda, the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So wherever he went, he was like looking. Somehow, he was very psychic. He and I as children, had such a psychic connection that we could travel on the astral plane several rooms apart. We couldn't hear each other's verses, but we could meet in between on a plane, astral plane, where we would have all sorts of amazing adventures with ethereal beings that we would meet on that plane. So for him to... Uh, for him to uh, be, be like that, it was easy for me to understand because we had had that psychic or astral connection before. So it was just almost like, we were almost like twins in the sense that we could understand each other's thoughts, each other's feelings, each other's purpose. So he was always a great inspiration to me uh, and because even though younger, he was so uh, naturally spiritually advanced. So we opened the Berkeley Temple, Berkeley, California Temple together, and we would have big kirtans there in front of Cody's bookstore, his 
Holiness um, Vridhananda Swami, uh, we had given him a ride up to uh, Berkeley in our car. We had an old car and we were driving up to Berkeley for preaching and uh, from Los Angeles, from the original uh, temple that was on Pasteanaga Boulevard, where I built and designed the first Vyasasan in existence in this gun for Srila Prabhupada. And we were driving up there together and um, we saw this chap looking pretty miserable standing by the side of the road um, which was roasting hot and he um, we stopped to give him a ride and he very happily got in he was perspiring heavily because it was hot sun and he was in the middle of the desert on the way to San Francisco to Oakland so as we went we just mercilessly with we mer, we gave mercilessly covered him with Prabhupada's mercy by talking to him and we did not stop he would have loved to have gotten out of the car and escaped but he couldn't because it was too hot out there so he stayed there all the way to Berkeley we dropped him off and we began our kirtans my brother would design some beautiful signs hand carved signs uh, showing Krishna and Prabhupada that we would hold like posters up but they were carved with wood and like picture frames and we were preaching in front of Cody's bookstore and this fat cat this fellow kept coming by the same one that we had brought on the um, brought on the uh, car from the middle of the desert and um, and lo and behold he joined the movement and became Vridhananda Das and then later Vridhananda Swami who later on became involved with the uh, 11th and 12th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam Sanskrit. So anyhow, uh, later on he married a wonderful lady, Tilak Devi Dasi, had a, had a beautiful child, Vanamali Devi Dasi, and uh, was also a very good husband, very loyal, very faithful, and very spiritually inspirational. His only fault, he was not a businessman. I was more of a businessman, but he was not a businessman. He was, he loved to take care of plants, so he did gardening. He did, he made gardening arrangements, but everywhere he went, he was sensitive to the plants, to the birds, to the bugs, to every creature. And um, he didn't make lots of money, but he certainly made lots of adoring friends as he did his service uh, for his family. And then as he progressed along the way, uh, he took wonderful care of his wife and his daughter, young daughter. And after that, when years had passed, he was living in Santa Cruz, California, and he decided to take renounced order of life, came to Punjabi Bagh, and I believe that's where he took sannyas. And from the rest is well known by all of you, because I could see from the photographs that everyone really took some inspiration from his inner character of uh, astrological power that he had as well as spiritual power that he derived from Prabhupada, who he considered to be the transparent via medium from Krishna. So every time he spoke about Prabhupada or spoke of Prabhupada or in behalf of Srila Prabhupada, representing Prabhupada, he saw Prabhupada as a transparent via medium. Because in 1968, Prabhupada had written to Brahmananda and said, we should all imagine that we are being dragged up through the Vaishnav Sampradaya by Lord Nityananda. Now you can ask, how can Lord Nityananda drag us up? It's like a bunch of lenses. How can he drag us up through the Vaishnav Sampradaya when he appeared 500 years ago? And the an answer, of course, is our Sampradaya, the Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya, um, 
Kodya Sampradaya is originates with Lord Balaram, and it is Balaram who became Lord Nityananda. So Prabhupada said Lord Nityananda is going to drag us up through the Vaishnav Sampradaya, but it is actually Balaram in that form of with plow, etc., and the manifestation of all the four types of Vishnus. And he pulled well, pulls us up through the disciplic succession as though we were traveling through clear lenses on a telescope. We're being pulled up through these clear lenses up to the transcendental lotus feet of Krishna. So, Bhakti Madhuri Govinda Goswami, I could tell by listening to his lecturing, by seeing the expression on his face, by seeing, more importantly, the expression on those faces that came around him, who looked with great amazement at him, that my brother took so seriously the notion that the Prabhupada is the transcendental via medium, uh, meaning that there is no obstacle, there is no anartha. But as he progressed, he progressed only for one purpose, and that was to reach the perfection of his sannyas years, and then in his body, which had begun to show, you know, the defects and flaws of old age, and, uh, you know, nature took its toll, heart condition took its toll, and all these other symbolic things, just as Prabhupada had heart condition also. Um, he then left his body gloriously and has now entered Samadhi. So I would like to say, I honor my brother, and everyone is saying to me, wherever I go and call me on the phone and text me on, uh, on, on the internet, on Facebook, they're saying, oh, you must be grieving for your brother uh, because, you know, he was so beloved. You must grieve. Grieving is there. But I will tell you, my primary emotion and feeling, knowing my brother, having taken initiation myself as Narayan Das and later on given the title Vishwakarma, um, builder, as I build things like Vyasasans and deities and things like that, that, that uh, he, as a builder, as a person who understands the mechanics of things, I looked at him, I know his, and I saw his condition, heard about his illness, heard about his surgery on the back, etc. And then he, then he left his mortal body. And except that his mortal body was in saffron and his mortal body had become sacred because of his having taken the great task of sannyas. So when I say, do you grieve for your brother passing? Yes. But I will say more than grief. I celebrate my brother Matthew Makandal Das Bhakti Madhurya Govinda Goswami. I celebrate his departure because I know wherever he goes, he will bring spiritual life to everyone, whomever, wherever he goes, whomever he meets, he will simply speak of Krishna, which was the direct instruction of Lord Chaitanya. Wherever you go, whomever you meet, simply speak of Krishna. So that is what I would like to say about my beloved brother, Bhakti Madhurya Govinda Goswami. And I say, let us celebrate the greatness of a person who can go on. Oh, one last thing. I have become a strong, begun a strong preaching, begun my own strong preaching movement, which is going to be based on actually a document gathered by Bhakti Madhuri Govinda Goswami for me a few years ago, uh, World Sankirtan, to bring 100,000 people together into a auditorium, football stadium, instead of silly nonsense football, kicking a ball around, which is better left to animals like dogs, 
uh, we will be chanting Hare Krishna in a hundred thousand people, everyone taking turns leading the kirtan. And that we did also at Punjabi Bhad Temple a few years ago when I was there. So I have, and you may find it surprising, or maybe you will laugh, or maybe you will take it very seriously. I've invited my brother in his present disembodied form to join in this World Sankirtan process. So if you ever see World Sankirtan emerging in parts of India with 100,000 people taking turns, nobody chanting, no big shot on the stage, just the individual people being given the microphones, one of 60 or 70 microphones to take turns chanting. And when that occurs, uh, you will understand that Bhakti Madhuri Govinda Goswami has been invited by me. Uh, I get to do that of his elder brother, you know, uh, even though he's more so advanced, to come and to inspire everyone in these melas. Hare Krishna, glories to Srila Prabhupada, and please accept my good wishes to all of you, my blessings to all of you, and my approach to you that you will also come to the shelter of Srila Prabhupada and help bring his transcendental movement transparently to the people of this world. Thank you very much.